Hi, I'm Brian Albert. I was told that I was gonna make a video on animated pilots and I got so excited. I've had this list for like ever and I was just... It's not, it's not about those pilots, is it? Animated pilots. They're the test run before the big deal. Usually when a studio is interested in a pitch for a new TV show, they fund the production of a pilot episode so they can get an idea of the tone, style, and appeal of an idea before they shell out the big bucks for it. Usually these things are really different from what they eventually become, but hey, that's part of the process. Gotta throw <laughs> shit against the wall to see what sticks. Didn't work. Pilots are ridiculously hard to get right. You have to introduce the characters, the world, the tone, the art style, and more in just five to ten minutes. All while you have the studio hovering over your shoulder waiting for you to get it done. Ah! But knowing that everything is just experimental, that nothing is set in stone, makes it a little freeing. The only people who are really gonna see this are some studio executives and nerds on the bonus features of your special edition box set. With the pilot for my show, House of Rejects, being worked on as we speak, I've spent a lot of time watching the pilots to some of my favorite shows to kind of get an idea of what I'm getting myself into. Um, hell, apparently. It's kind of amazing how many lost and forgotten pilots you can find on the internet, which kind of destroys the point of it being called lost and forgotten, but you know, I don't care, I just watch them. SpongeBob SquarePants, the show that tricked kids everywhere that this was a natural occurrence. Creator Steven Hillenburg was given the chance to pitch to Nickelodeon after working on Rocco's Modern Life. After taking characters from an old comic book he wrote called The Intertidal Zone and spending months on developing the series, SpongeBoy was born. Until they realized Spongeboy was the name of a mop brand and Spongebob was born. Happens all the time. My parents call me Swiffer before they realized it was taken. The pilot itself is pretty consistent with the Spongebob we would eventually come to know and love. They nail the vibe and spirit of Spongebob right off the bat. Like, visually it's pretty rough, but the writing and the humor are exactly what the rest of the show would be like, or at least for another few years. It's a lot easier to introduce characters and overall tone with an episodic show like this. Spongebob was always about optimism in the face of adversity, and we get that right away. Steven Hillenburg was actually kind of genius. He knew what he wanted and he believed in it wholeheartedly, which is really all you can do at that early point in your career. The Amazing World of Gumball was created by the Cartoon Network development studio Europe. The studio staff was asked to develop a bunch of original ideas and they picked the best one to develop for about nine months before starting work on the pilot. Here, Gumball and Darwin try to break out of school. The visuals are obviously different, going for a weird found footage type look with the shaky cam and muted green tint over everything. But the humor is pretty much on point. It's got that adult edge to it with a level of childish silliness that made Gumball so memorable to begin with. It's kind of crazy how compared to the Spongebob pilot, which was pretty much perfect to begin with, this one has a lot of kinks to work out. And I don't mean the Rule 34 kind. The pilot for Fairly Odd Parents was aired as part of Nick's Oh Yeah cartoons block, and it has a completely different vibe to it. The plot is recognizable. Timmy meets Cosmo and Wanda for the first time, they torment his babysitter Vicky, and there are inklings of what the show would eventually turn into for those early seasons, but like, it still doesn't feel... Right? Okay, yeah, I know that's not, like, helpful. But, like, come on, sometimes something just feels wrong. You know, this feels just like the Fairly Odd Parents pilot. Nothing about the writing particularly stands out. There's humor in the sense that a joke happens and I go, that sure was a joke. But there's also just a lot of exposition in the first third of the episode, which I know is important to explain what the hell is actually going on, but it kind of makes my eyes glaze over. What really sells this pilot though is its overwhelming creativity. The world of fairies is intriguing. I just have to see more of it. Not that much. It's also weird to hear all the voices slightly different. Cosmo sounds and acts more put together and less uh, squeaky. And they even did the whole thing where the parents are just legs. Very glad we didn't get that in the final show. All in all, an alright pilot. Not the best, not the worst either. Just kinda mid. Alright, what's next? Hi, I'm Kailan. Let's fucking <laughs> go! I love Nihao Kailan. This was just such a good show, and the pilot has everything that made this show so good to begin with. Kailan introduces us to Dragon Day. What's Dragon Day? A day she completely made up. Well, at least she's honest. Kailan then shows us the Dragon Dance, which requires you to possess the innate ability to levitate and talk to a koala. I can only do one of those things. I'm kind of screwed here. Also, I don't really see why you have to set aside a whole day just for this one dance. Uh, this seems like a dance that can really be done anywhere at any time. That being said, with this much shaking bare ass, I would set aside a whole day for this too. And Grandpa shows up to scare the shit out of everyone, and then the episode's over. This one's cute. I like it. What more is there to say? Honestly, probably just needs more bear ass. Oh, never mind. Dan Povenmire and Jeff Swampy Marsh pitched the pilot to Disney with just storyboards, rather than a fully produced pilot. Disney was down for it, but they still had to convince the overseas executives. So Povenmire edited the whole thing together with just his voice and some sound effects and sent it over. And if you want a good example of how to make a good pitch, 
then here you go. It's just so interesting and funny and personal. The humor is witty, clever, and borderline adult. A lot of Phineas and Ferb as we know it today is here in this pilot. But it's also slightly more sarcastic, especially Phineas, who's uh, pretty much a dick. And check. Some of the names are different, there are more references to the fact that they're just a couple of kids, but other than that, it's pretty much perfect. The differences that are there are pretty stark. Doofenshmirtz is called Metal Schmirtz, and when we get to the end... I'm sorry I ever said anything bad about... Oh, he's gonna say it! I'll get you! Yeah, there's no curse you parry the platypus moment. Talk about a disappointment. But honestly, it's still a damn good pitch. All the vibes of the show are there, and all of the charm is there to get the studio to say yes. They do end with Comic Sans though, so we can't all be perfect. This one's weird. The names are slightly different, but it's better than some other versions. And check. It was low-hanging fruit day in the writer's room. The vibes are just off. Aang feels more immature and is kind of an idiot. He's just too childish. I know that the point of first season Aang is that he wasn't mentally prepared for his role as the Avatar, but in this it just seems like he doesn't care. The characters here feel more like their Ember Island player's counterparts. Katara, here called Kaya, is more nagging and less fun. Sokka's a jerk. Aang is just overly bubbly. And Zuko is just angry. The shorter format also makes makes it feel weirdly rushed. High concept fantasy shows are hard to pull off in an 11 minute format and require a ton of exposition. But where they do nail it is in the action scenes. This shit <laughs> is awesome. Like the way that we visually learn about them characters through the way that they fight is just peak cinema and just straight up fun to watch. The way that like Zuko is more aggressive and Aang is like dodging because he's more passive. It's just so cool and I get why Nick greenlit this despite its glaring flaws. Taking a show like this on even after seeing a pretty mediocre pilot it was a huge risk on Nickelodeon's part. This doesn't really show the full potential of what this show could become, but boy am I glad that they said yes. Nickelodeon does usually do a good job when it comes to picking pilots. Bad boy! Usually. I'm sorry, I, I was just never a fan of this show, even as a kid. If you like this show, more power to you, but I was just never a fan of the loudness and the toilet humor and even just the art style. But if I were to say objectively, as a pilot, this isn't actually that bad. If we're just going off of the idea that a pilot is meant to sell the vibe of the show, then Fanboy pulls it off. We don't see a lot of the characters or the settings, but some of the crucial elements are there, like being loud. That being said, the whole superhero element of the pilot got pretty lost in the actual show itself. I feel like there's just a lot of humor to see these kids desperately want to be famous superheroes. A couple of losers, am I right? But it also seems like the premise isn't the main selling point here. It seems to be just about the humor, which is definitely not suited for everyone guilty as charged. But I think that's what kind of bothers me. The best pilot sold us on a premise or an idea or a world. This one's just about dumb kids doing stupid stuff. Which isn't wrong, right? Like, I don't know. There's just not a cool world or premise to hook me in on this one. A part of me wants a little more. But again, if you like it, you like it. It's just not for me. <laughs> this just looks so weird but I can't look away. It has that 90s experimental animation look that's just so ugly, but it's still so entrancing. Our hero Tommy Pickles discovers the toilet for the first time. You know, it's surprisingly difficult and goes on a little adventure. Classic Rugrats stuff. So the basic premise is there, and that's more than enough of a selling point. I mean, who doesn't love watching children? No, I didn't mean it like that. I was talking about babies. I don't know why I thought that'd be better. Well, there goes my eyesight. I'm not saying the animation for the actual Jimmy Neutron show was particularly nice looking, but it, um, definitely looked a lot better than this. I know Toy Story had only been out for like three years, but everyone moves with this unnatural stiffness and the facial expressions are just, uh, yeah. But I gotta give them credit. 3D animation was new and people were just starting to get the hang of things. I can imagine they sat the animators down and they wondered how it fit in the sharpener. The characters are slightly off and aren't quite themselves, but Hugh Neutron is completely the same because you can't perfect what is already perfect. But yeah, no, th this hasn't aged well. I'd love to see a modern reboot of Jimmy Neutron with updated animation, but another part of me wants to be an accepted member of society, so there's really no winning here. So your time, come on, grab your friends, we'll go to very distant land.
Oh boy, this is so different from the show we ended up getting. And it was actually intended to be a Nicktoon before they rejected it completely, because someone just had to have Fanboy and Chum Chum instead. It follows the same basic story of Finn and Jake saving Princess Bubblegum from the Ice King, and it plays out the way you kinda expect it to, with some minor surprises. And you even get appearances from some beloved characters like the Penguins and Lady Rainicorn. Knock knock! <laughs> Same. This one's just really fun. I enjoyed watching this one, it has this sort of internet shitpost vibe that I didn't really get as much from the actual show itself. I mean, like, the actual show has those elements, but the pilot lives off of them. <laughs> Okay, let's get it out of the way. Hey, Peter! There you go. You happy? I did the thing. Yay! <laughs> there are actually two sort of pilots for Family Guy. First one is Larry and Steve, a sort of spiritual successor to Family Guy. This is the short Seth MacFarlane did before Family Guy that has a lot of the same voices and joke stylings. They even use the same font for the title sequence. But it's clear why this was passed up. It feels like Family Guy, but like weirdly held back. I don't know if it was the studio or MacFarlane himself, but after getting used to hearing these voices with more irreverent humor and limited animation, it's weird seeing them do vaudeville Looney Tunes style slapstick comedy. Not to mention the smoother animation. It just feels sterile. It's like hearing Michael Bublé do Megadeth. Weirdly enough, this works. The actual Family Guy pilot feels more like Family Guy. We got a winner! A lot of the humor is here. The characters stay true to the original archetypes McFarlane based them on. It really feels like that alternative to The Simpsons everyone claimed it to be at the time. Seth McFarlane is one of those people in Hollywood who I think is amazingly talented and creative, but has made nothing that I particularly enjoy. Which is weird to me. I mean, how can such a multi-talented guy create so much stuff I'm just sort of ambivalent to? The man can sing, act, dance, write, direct, you name it, but every single time he makes a new show or movie, I'm like, like, eh, but who cares what I think? I still think this is funny. But as a pilot, it's pretty decent. I might actually like it more than the actual show. Family Guy, when Seth MacFarlane was still working on, it was actually really promising. Funny, irreverent, offensive, but not just offensive for the sake of it. Very different from the show we have now. If you didn't know, Gravity Falls is one of my favorite shows of all time, and this pilot is pretty similar to how the show actually ended up. In fact, a lot of the dialogue clips from the pilot ended up in the actual finished episode. The designs are obviously different, but still recognizable. They even go for a more obvious puppet-style animation, but I guess that came from budget and time constraints more than anything. It's also a lot shorter. Most pilots tend to be, but a lot of the narrative is still intact. Alex Hirsch prioritized setting the tone and introducing the characters over setting up future storylines. Hirsch, much like Steven Hillenburg, knew what he wanted and stuck to it. I got to talk to one of the writers and directors of Gravity Falls, Mike Rianda, and he told me how important it was to stick to your vision. Yeah, of course you'll need help and collaboration from other talented, funny people you trust, but if something doesn't line up with what you believe to be the right direction for your show, like an executive note or a note from standards and practices, then you have every right to stick to your guns and push through. But also sometimes you're stupid and wrong and have bad ideas. Guess which one I am! But Alex Hirsch definitely knew what he was talking about here. Gravity Falls is an amazing show, and the pilot puts it all on display right off the bat. And luckily, Disney took the bait. But sometimes you don't get a development deal from a studio. Sometimes you just want to get your stuff out there for the world to see. And sometimes, if you want to do something right, you gotta do it yourself. With the dawn of the internet, a lot of animation students and independent creators are just putting their pilots online in the hopes of garnering an audience, and maybe even support from a network. <clears throat> I've seen some really amazing creative independent shorts and pilots over the years. Long Gone Gulch, Obituary of Grave Beginning, and Clicker, which was a scad film. These are all crazy good independent shorts that I would love to see as official projects on TV or streaming or whatever. I'm not gonna show any of the clips here, because I really want you to support these guys by giving this stuff a watch, so I'll just link them in the doobly-doo down below. The best thing about pilots is that they're a reminder that creativity is iterative. No one's ever really gonna get it right in the first go. It takes a lot of pressure off of me as an art student, a uh, creative, and I guess a person. As imperfect as these pilots are, you can sense the creativity and passion behind them. And honestly, that's the most important thing. The unknown is scary, and there's nothing more unknown than producing a pilot that you don't know the audience for or not even sure if it's gonna get picked up. But it's part of the gig, and Guess I gotta be ready for that. Take care of yourselves, and if you don't mind, I'm gonna take a look at my notes that I've been taking while watching all these pilots to see how I can improve my own. Can't argue with that.